page number 40. Are you washed in the blood? Your garments, my 
that you're here. It's good to have you. And we're looking at Old Pass Baptist Church. We're singing that first song, and are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. See, down south, we say washed. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, you say, not me, but hey, listen, that's just the way I know it. It's just washed. And, uh, my famous says, you'll say that pretty soon. Hey, listen, that's, that's it, right? And uh, you won't hear that up north. But uh, it's good to have my aunt and my uncle with us. And they was, they was in for the wedding. Uh, we love them greatly. And it's the first time they've been here. And we're glad, so glad. Listen, they gave us hope because we realized that northern people can't be saved. <laughs> no, the Homer's not from there. But, uh, but Aunt Lou Ann is. Yes. Amen. So we're, uh, that's good. Amen. Yes. The mamas have got us in question. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but I'm glad to have my mama here. Amen. It's good to have her here. It's good to see everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm thankful that I'm washed, washed. <laughs> Amen. Either way, you want to call praise God, I'm washed in the blood of the Amen. Right. Only the blood of Jesus yes. can wash away your sins. Amen. Not by good works, not by being a good person, not by just going to church, not by baptism. Only through the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And I'm thankful that I know that. I'm thankful that, listen, His precious blood, if you're not saved this morning, you can, you can walk away from here. You may came to the doors lost and uh, with your sins upon you in the bondage of sin, but you can leave washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. You can Amen. leave, praise God, a child of God, putting your faith and your trust in Him. And uh, we're just grateful everybody's here. We do want to pray, ask God's blessing on the service. So let's do that, and then you can be seated and wait some announcements to continue on. So let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, I love you so much, God. I'm thankful to be in your house, Lord. I I want to thank you for all those that came out this morning, God. I thank you for those that may be tuned in this morning as well. They're watching. Lord, we pray that you'll bless them also, God. I pray we're here to hear from you, God. We need you. God, we're a needy people, Father. I need you. I'm nothing without you, God. And I need your help. I need your touch. I need your blessing. I pray that you'll touch the service, every aspect of it, God. We're here to worship you, magnify Jesus. Lord, I pray that you'd be at the singing as We've already, my heart's been touched from the congregationals, but as they sing special music here in just a moment, God, I pray your touch upon them, Lord. And I ask as we open your word, God, you'll speak to us through your Holy Spirit in only a way that you can, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. A couple of announcements I want to make and get these out of the way, and then we're going to have the offering. Uh, just a few reminders. Of course, we started back with our, we've been having Sunday school, but we've had everybody kind of in here. Uh, we started uh, this Sunday with uh, the children going to their Sunday school class and then the young boys and our young boys class going Brother Jason. So we're going to continue that now. Uh, we've got the adult Sunday school class here. Just to let you know what we're doing in that, we're doing back, I call it back to the basics, but we're just covering just those foundational doctrinal truths, the building blocks that Christians need to know today uh, that are helpful, not just why we believe what we believe at Old Pass Baptist Church, but what does the Bible say? Why we believe, and this is what the Bible says, based upon the doctrinal truths that we need to know. So it's been a blessing, and uh, if, you, if you haven't joined us, we'd like to encourage you to do that. That's uh, every Sunday morning here in the adult Sunday school class in the sanctuary, and uh, then we've got our other classes as well. Also, just as a reminder, we've got Father's Day on the 21st. So I told the ladies in Sunday school, fair enough warning, all right? So, Miss Christie, there you go. Kimber, give them fair, no excuses. I mean, it should be a good one for them, right? And, uh, oh, y'all ain't got children, do you? Hey, I'm well, you'll give them something anyway. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, just, just start off, just go ahead. Kimber, just get in on the day, man. The rest of you fathers, hey, listen, you ladies, it's just fair. There we go, you know? Uh, so I know Miss Sue, Miss Lucy, y'all can just get me something if you want. <laughs> it'll be fine, you know. I'll, I'll accept that. Uh, that'll be as well too. Brother Jason, he wouldn't be, he wouldn't be hard wrong about that. I really primed and brought Miss Kayla this morning. Uh, she rolled her eyes. I seen that. Really primed and brought. But uh, we'll get it. We'll get her straightened out this morning. Amen. So we good. Praise the Lord. But do we have fathers? They looking forward to that. Listen, I tell you what. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate. Uh, you men and, and try, trying to lead your homes and, and wanting to lead it in a godly. We, we need, listen, there are two things. We need a lot of things in America, but we need some men. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We need some men in America. Not only men, but we need some God. That's right. And the men that love the Lord, uh, love Amen. their wives the way Christ loved the church, to love their families, to, to just love the Lord, the local church. And I appreciate you men. And uh, so we're going to have a good Father's Day, Lord willing, on the 21st. And then on the 28th, it's the last Sunday of the month, so we're getting back to our birthday anniversary celebration. So uh, 
Uh, we're going to have that. We'll have uh, we'll have a list. Eventually, we'll have up as far as the menu of what we're going to be having. So we'll have morning services that morning, and then we'll have our meal in the afternoon. We'll be together in the fellowship hall and, and just enjoying the fellowship, and then we'll be back in here in the afternoon with nothing in the evening, no evening service. That's going to be on the 28th. So I just wanted to make mention of that as well. We'll kind of get back in schedule on that also. So. Let's have the boys come. They're going to collect the offering. If they'll make their way up there, we're going to have Brother Jason just in a moment. He's going to pray over the offering. He's going to lead us in a song. And uh, they're going to collect the offering. When they're done, we'll go ahead and have some special music and get to the words. So Brother Jason, why don't you come and pray? Heavenly Father, we are grateful to be in your house, Lord. Lord, we're thankful for the day you've given us, Lord, the beautiful sunshine outside. And well, Father, Lord, I just pray that you will meet with us inside this place, Lord, inside this building that you provided for us. Lord, we don't want to meet in vain, Father, Lord. We didn't come just to meet and gather and, Lord, just to see one another, Lord. We come to hear from you and thank you for the songs that we've already sung. Thank you for a voice, Lord, that we can be able to lift and magnify and glorify you for what you've done in our lives and all the blessings that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, most of all for salvation, Father. Thank you for that way that you made for us on the cross of Calvary. Lord, that precious blood that was shed, Lord, for the forgiveness of all of our sins. But, Father, I pray, Lord, that you will touch us Lord, be with this offering, which we're about to receive, Lord. I pray that you'll help us to use your money, Lord, and wisely, Father, Lord, not foolishly. I pray, Lord, you help us make the right decisions for the church, Lord. Be with our pastor, Lord, as he does those things. And, Lord, just pray you will touch him, Lord, as he, here in a moment, Lord, just gets up and preaches what you lay on his heart, Lord, exactly what we need. I pray, Lord, we come through this place, Lord, to be able to, with open hearts and open ears, Lord, to be able to receive the word of God, Lord, that we can... Not only hear it, but, Lord, being able to put into action, apply it to our lives, Lord, and live it. Father, I pray you'll be with the special music as well. But, Lord, everything that we do within this place today, I pray, Lord, that you're around it. I pray the Holy Spirit will move amongst us. And I pray that your name will be magnified and glorified. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Page 263, the Lord is good.
is true. Well, if you will, if everybody will take your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn to Genesis chapter 22. The book of Genesis chapter 22. Turn to some other passages as we get further along into the message, but I do want you to mark this place. We will find ourselves back here again. We were here last Sunday. I did not get finished uh, with the message, and so I wanted to finish up this afternoon. We had started last week. I'll recap just a little bit for you, for those of you that weren't here, and then we'll jump right into the thoughts I have for you this morning. Pray it will be a blessing to you. Uh, let's go ahead, if you have found your place, let's stand to our feet as reverence God's Word. I'm going to read starting in verse 1 this morning, Genesis chapter 22. Follow along with me, please. It says this, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I, or here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Question. Can you imagine? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there. And the lad uh, and the laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called upon him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, thank you so very much for your word. Thank you for your son Jesus going to a cross and paying the sin that we could not pay, that we might have everlasting life, have hope, joy, a home in heaven, God. Lord, right now as we open your word, Father, we need to hear from you. We're desiring that. God, would you help us? I need your help, God. Please help me, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. I'll make a few comments, and then we'll go ahead and get into the thought that I have this morning to kind of wrap up this, this account. Of course, you see here in Genesis chapter 22 a lot of things. You think about Abraham and his life. At 75 years old, he entered the school of faith. Think about that, 75. He's over 100 here, and his, his faith, he's still facing these soul-searching experiences that are testing and trying his faith. What does that tell us? You're going to have to live by faith on a daily basis. Amen. You're going to face experiences in the Christian life, being obedient to God, that is going to test and try your faith. Amen? All right. We see in this passage, though, this account that obedient faith overcomes the tests and trials of life. It's so important not to just say that you have faith, but that you're living by faith. Amen? 
It's being put to the test as you're, you're practicing uh, and trusting in the Lord what he has said and trusting in what he has done and what he will do. Look, if we're going to overcome trials in life, if we're going to overcome tests and tribulations as a child of God, if we're going to be what God desires us to be as a child of God to other people to see the Lord in our life, we're going to have to live by faith. Right. We're going to have to practice faith in the Lord. We need faith like Abraham. Right. And we began to look last Sunday, what kind of faith was that? That's kind of what we started looking at. And uh, I, I said this, the first thing was his faith stood the test. His faith withstood the test. We talked about he, he passed. His faith passed the family test. We talked a little bit about that. The fortune test, the fight test, the fear test. We spent quite some time there today. We've got such a nation living in fear. Most of what you're seeing today is people without a God handling the situation. Right. And uh, if we'll just simply trust the Lord and be mindful of and, 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 and just use common sense for the fact of the matter is fear brings bondage to man. And if we're going to overcome fear, we must live by faith. And we see even that with his situation by faith. Listen, by faith. There are those in the Bible, through their faith in God, they overcame great trials, tribulations, and are used an example to us today. And so we looked at that. The second thing we looked at was this. His faith did not question God. Never will you see here in this account. And look, this, like I said uh, last week, this isn't some fairy tale or some story. This is a true account of right. what took place Amen. by a man we're reading about, his son and God and what God did and in this. God asked him to do something that was unimaginable in his mind. How could you? But yet his faith was so strong in God, although he could not physically figure it out with the capability, Brother Barth, of his own mindset and thinking, he had enough faith in God to know God would take care of the situation. Do you have that kind of faith? I can promise you there will be times in your Christian life you'll not have it all figured out. You're just going to have to trust in the Lord. Amen. There are going to be times when it comes to standing for God and overcoming things. You're just going to have to put your faith in His written word and what God has shown you in the past in the promises He provides in His word. And you're going to have to just simply have a faith that will not question Him but obey Him. Right. Never one time does he question God. Uh, and, and look, I said this, it's so important today. God's word wasn't given to us to debate and to question. It was given to us to obey. That's right. To follow, to live by. You're not going to experience victory in the Christian life if you don't have a faith that's always going to question God. If you have a faith that's going to question God. Too often that's the problem. God may ask you to do things that you're not going to know the end result. It may be difficult. It may be opposite of what your flesh is feeling. And that's where you've got to have faith in God and His Word to overcome so God can accomplish what He so desires. The third thing is this. His faith believed God's promises. Part of the reason he had a faith that didn't question God, Brother Jason, was he believed the promises God had shared with him and given him in the past. This Bible is loaded with promises from God. That's right. That he's given to his children, to us, that we must believe. And if we'll believe them and we'll live by them in times when our faith is tried and tested, it'll help us have a faith that will not question God, have a faith that will not quit on God, have a faith that will stay in the test of time and withstand the testing if we will simply trust in the promises of God. We sing that song, Standing on the Promises of God. Boy, there are times in our Christian life, and, and you know this, if you've lived for God for any short period of time, there are sometimes the only thing that will keep you standing is the promises of God. Amen. And we'll have to stand upon them and, and rest upon them and lean upon them in times of our Christian life. Abraham did not forget the promise that God had for him and for Isaac. By faith, Abraham experienced victory over this. He experienced provision. He experienced blessings. We need to understand how important that is. So in, in our testing, in our trials, our tribulation, 
Uh, look, it's, it's easy to let the burden take over. It's easy to let the trial take over. It's easy to get encapsulated in that thought process, and it overwhelms your life. And I'm not downplaying the trials and tribulations we face as Christians. I'm just telling you, God is bigger, and God is greater than those trials. He's greater than that hurt. He's greater than that sorrow. He's greater than that fear. How do I get that, preacher? How do I tap into that? Trust the Lord. Amen. Live by faith. Amen. Now, here's what I want to show you. That was pretty much what we covered last week. And here's what I want to show you. This just blessed my heart. And I hope it will be a blessing to your heart. Uh, maybe a little bit different, but but I, I hope that it will, will speak to your heart the way it did mine. God, what I love about the Bible is God, all through the Bible, you may have heard this said, you can find Jesus on every page. All through the world, even in the Old Testament, Seeing Jesus, seeing Christ, we know everything is about Jesus. And God, at times, Brother Jason, he'll use things, he'll use accounts to paint a picture of Christ. That's right. And I believe that this is one of the most beautiful accounts we have in God's Word to paint the glorious picture of the beauty of salvation and what Jesus has done for everybody. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to take a little bit of time just to kind of take part of this account and use it to, to hopefully paint a picture for you in your mind that you can see Jesus through it. All right? Now, one thing we'll do, and, this, and what this we're doing here, it's called typology. It's taking types. And, and it's, it's, what it is is it's, 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 giving, it's a type of. Understand this. With typology, it's, it's a good thing. And we're going to see how it paints a picture, but it all, typology is good to an extent, but it's always going to fall short of the original. Okay? What I mean by this, we're going to see a great picture of Jesus through this account, but there's nothing better than Jesus. That's right. There's nothing better than seeing Jesus for who he is. Right. So just understand that as we, as we go through it. I think there's nothing wrong with that, but it's just understanding we see it throughout the word of God because God uses. Think about Jesus even when he witnessed to so many people, many times he used parables. Why? Because he was getting them to, he was trying to get Papa on their level to get them to see and, and be able to relate to the truth he was bringing forth. And so I think that this passage can do that for us, whether you're lost or saved, in both literally and then you look at it spiritually. When you think about this account and you think about the offering of Isaac, just you think about that. And, and can you imagine, but you see this offering of Isaac in the book of Genesis, the, the amazing, even as amazing as the account was in the scripture is, how it paints a picture of Jesus Christ and what he did for us. And, and, and what the, the part Abraham had in that and every aspect of this. So uh, as we see a father willing to sacrifice his only begotten son, it paints a beautiful picture to people. That there, well before this, was and is a father who was willing to sacrifice his son for your sins. That was God. And the one that was sacrificed was Jesus Christ, right. the precious Lamb of God. And so, so God giving of his only begotten son to save sinners. Uh, here we see Abraham. He stopped Abraham short of what he followed through with with Jesus. See the typology, though? It, it does a good job of painting a picture, but it comes up short of the original in the fact of he did not sacrifice. Jesus took him up to, uh, God took him up to that point to paint a picture of what Jesus did for us. Because of the Lamb of God, as we call Jesus Christ, that sacrificial Lamb of God, and the death of Jesus and the burial and the resurrection, we as Christians, those who have trusted in God, we have victory through that. Amen. It's the core of what we preach and we preach Christ. So in these verses, it's a beautiful picture of what took place on Mount Calvary. So what I'm trying to do is lay the groundwork for you as we begin to dive into this. You're going to parallel keep in your mind what Jesus did for you and what we see through this passage. So let me give you number one is this. Isaac is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ in this passage. So how could that be, preacher? Well, think about this. Both Isaac and Jesus, both of them they were children of promise. They were children of promise. If you were to go to Genesis 15, and we don't have time, and you look at Genesis 15, you see where God promised Abraham he would have a son from his own loins. 
And through his son, he would produce and, and expand his seed and to go from that. That angered him in his promise. We see that that was promise was going to be fulfilled. But then you see over in Isaiah uh, uh, chapter 7, verse 14, the promise of Jesus Christ coming to this earth, being born of a virgin. Both of their births were extraordinary. You think about Isaac, you think about the Lord Jesus Christ. Sarah and Abraham, they weren't spring chickens when this took place. When, when, when Isaac was born, both were dead reproductively. There, it was at an age of just no promise of that taking place, but yet it took a miracle from God to allow for Isaac to be born. Think about the Lord Jesus. He was born of a virgin. That's a miracle of God. It's the Holy Spirit of Shepherd and Mary and, and the miracle of God as well. So there's a parallel there. Listen, they were both their father's only begotten. You ever thought about that? In Hebrews 11, here's what it tells us. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Then we know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. So you see the parallel here? How amazing it is with, with God. And we see in the account here that uh, uh, Isaac is, is a picture. He's, he's a type of Jesus. Realize this. Here's one more and we'll move on to the next point. Neither one of them had broken the law that they should be offered up. Jesus was sinless. Came to this earth, perfect. Went to the cross without any sin. But Isaac, he had done nothing wrong to be sacrificed. Right. Just again, it's a, it's a type and a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe God's taking this account and just giving us another beautiful picture of what Jesus did for us. Here's number two. What about Abraham? I believe Abraham is a picture of God the Father. He's a picture of God the Father. Abraham was willing to spare his son for a sacrifice. It's unfathomable to us. I have a son. Some of you have sons. We have children. There's not a one of us in here that would be willing to do what Abraham did. Let's be honest. Right. He had more faith than we do. Right. And yet you understand that through that, I believe God, by him doing it, and we, us reading this account, it shows us that God the Father spared not his only begotten Son that we may have eternal life. What a blessing. Amen. What a blessing. Look, as much love as Abraham had for Isaac, he was not going to withhold him if that's what the Lord wanted. And as much love as God the Father had for the Lord Jesus Christ, Brother Jason, he did not withhold him from Calvary, so we might have everlasting life. Amen. And I'm going to tell you what, you begin to look at this, I, I hope it, like I said, I hope, if you're not getting blessed, sorry, I am, praise Amen. God. It's blessing my heart. I, I love the Word of God. Amen. It is so rich. And listen, I mean, we, we know Jesus, but we even see, I mean, and this is why, how can a person not believe in God through an account of, of individuals using those individuals with backgrounds that replicates and represents the true and living one of Jesus and God and what he did. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Romans chapter 8 says this. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. For us all. Jesus died for you. He died for everybody. Listen, it's not just black lives that matter to Jesus. All lives matter to Jesus. Right. Amen. And for us, it shouldn't just be a certain color. Everybody should Amen. 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 Jesus died for everybody. Right. Right. God loved you enough to put his son in your place to suffer a terrible death that you might have hope, everlasting life, home in heaven, joy, to be able to sing and shout. To be able to experience the blessings of God. To have the Holy Spirit of God dwell in you as a child of God until the day he calls you home. A home in heaven. Praise God. Amen. The 
here's something else I want you to look at. You may not have thought of it. You may say, okay, preacher, I can see that. What about the donkey? You say, what in the world would that? That donkey is a picture of you before you received Christ. That donkey is a picture of a sinner. You say, how is that? Well, I want to show you something. This is interesting. Look at verse 3. It says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Now understand something. And just understand a little bit about a, a donkey. A donkey in the Bible is symbolic of a sinner. You say, how is that? Well, they were considered unclean. Donkeys were considered an unclean animal. Guess what? You and I, we're filthy in our sin. Right. We're filthy in our sin. Guess what else about a donkey? They, they, they are tippled for going astray. They're hard headed. Some of you still have that trade after you're saved, right? <laughs> Not us men. Amen. <laughs> right. But they're, hey, naturally they go astray. Remember Saul? When God had, had chosen him, when he was being obedient to his father, you know what he was doing? He was chasing down them donkeys and running off. All right? They're stubborn. They're not like a, a sheep or an ox. Right? And you think about us as a sinner, how easily we went astray. How easily and stubborn we are. Think about how stubborn some people are to salvation. Right. Think how people, listen, there, there are people that fight it. I thank God, Brother Sanford, I thank God when the Holy Spirit of God dealt with my heart. This, it wasn't the first time. What I mean by that is this. I'm thankful he didn't give up on me. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful the times that I was stubborn, the times I ignored Brother Jason, the times that I tried to, to push away, the times that I fought it, he kept coming back. Amen. Amen. Why did I do that? Why, why, Kipper, why was stubborn like a donkey, lost in my sin? Why would anybody want to resist salvation through Jesus? Because we're like a donkey. Right. Stubborn. Stubborn. So we see this, this donkey, it represents a sinner in the fact of going astray, stubborn. But that's not the only thing. Papa, that donkey was burdened down with the load of all the things for the sacrifice. They put everything on the back of that donkey to head that way to, to the mount. He had the wood on him. He had all those things on him. You know what that represents? That represents sin in the life of a sinner. People today, I live, I, I'll call my shot. There are so many people today that don't want to trust in Jesus. How can I give my life over to him? I, I don't, because they like being their own God. Right. What they don't realize, Kemper, is they're just bound in their own sin. The Bible says we're dead in our trespasses and sin. We're living in bondage due to that sin. People think, well, I'm going to live in you. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. You're living in the bondage of your sin. And just as that stuff was bound on the back of that donkey, people without Jesus go through life bound in bondage of sin. You say, oh, preacher, listen, go back to when you're lost. Listen, for me, I can tell you and for others in this room, listen, I may have been smiling and laughing and going through life, but Brother Jason, there was a bondage, there was a burden on me. Right. Because of my sin, but the night I finally went down that aisle and called on Jesus to save me, burdens were lifted at Calvary. Amen. Amen. Go to Hebrews. Keep your place here. We're going to come back, but go to Hebrews. I want you to see this. Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. Let me show you this passage. Hebrews chapter 2, and I want you to look at verses 14 and 15. It says this, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him, that had the power of death that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. A person without Jesus living in their sin is living a life of bondage. Right. 
life of bondage. Lost, bound in that sin, carrying that sin. But then look at this. Very interesting. Look at this. This is bless your heart. If it doesn't, pretend it does, praise God. Because I tell you what, this is good. I mean, go back to go back to our text. Genesis chapter 22. And look at verse 5. With that mindset, now go back to our text. Look what it says. And Abraham said unto the young, unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Come again to you. What's getting ready to happen? Here's what's getting ready to happen. That, that, that donkey, it carried the wood to the foot of the mountain. It carried the load, Brother Jason, to the foot of the mountain. But not up the mountain. Not up the mountain. Not up the mountain at all. <laughs> if you hadn't gotten it, you're going to get it just a little bit. Amen? The light bulb will go off. Listen, you may carry that bondage in your life when you're a sinner, but if you ever get to Calvary, there's someone there to take that load off of you. Yes. He's already taken your load of sin. Right. He's already paid that price. And his yes. name is Jesus. Amen. His name is Jesus. Amen. That leads you to my fourth point there. Isaac, from this point on, Isaac, who represents Christ, he bore the sticks that represent that sin as the Lord Jesus Christ bore your sin. Go back. Look what it says here. Verse 5, And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham, look here, took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. There was a transfer of the burden from the donkey to the son at the mount. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And that's exactly what takes place when a person gets born again. Right. And look what it says here. And he took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they went both of them together. From that point on, the load was on Isaac. Amen. Isaac didn't start carrying the wood until he got to the mound. Amen? It was taken off of the donkey and placed on the sun. The Lord Jesus Christ was willing to come to this earth without any sin, but bear the sin debt. Bear your sin. He bore our sin. He paid the sin debt on Calvary. Listen to 1 Peter chapter 2. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live under righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Abraham took the wood, that bird that was upon the donkey, he took it off of the donkey and laid it on Isaac. At Calvary, Jesus took your sin and my sin, your sorrow, your pain, and God poured his wrath out on his only begotten son that you, when you trusted him, can have through the precious blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary and by his death, burial, and resurrection, now that he's victoriously hey, overcome death on the devil, you can, when you put your faith in him, have a home in heaven. Amen. Life. Amen. Have your sins forgiven. Isaiah 53 says this, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. I can't imagine. Do you realize this? You can't look. We can't even pay for our own sin debt. We can't. We can't even. We can't even handle that. And yet Jesus took upon the sins of the world. Sins of the world. Look, I know we deal with things at times, and I, I know we go through sorrow. We experience pain. We experience loneliness. Do you realize Jesus, not only did he pay your sin debt on Calvary, but he experienced every single one of those for you? Right. And Brother Jason, not only did he overcome and, and, and pay that sin debt, but he overcame sorrow. He overcame loneliness. Right. He overcame those, listen, that pain. He took upon all that and conquered every bit of it. Amen. This is why he's so wonderful. Right. Not only when you trust him, you have a home in heaven, but you have a Savior that, listen, by all points was tempted. He overcame everything, amen. 
He took upon your sorrow, your pain, your suffering, your loneliness. That's why he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Sometimes we feel when we go through something like we're all alone, you're never alone if you have Jesus. That's right. Listen, the one that knows about loneliness is the one that hung on the cross that day right. when his own father turned his back after he poured out his wrath on his son. I'm telling you, Jesus is the greatest gift in all the world. Yes, Amen. Amen. Now look at this. Abraham, he had two things, didn't he? It tells us he had a, a knife and he had a torch. All right? Do you need to understand a little something about this? In, in that, that those were both instruments of death. The knife to end physical life. You had the torch, then it would be used to burn the wood for the sacrifice. Do you realize in the Bible, as you begin to study the Word of God, fire is always a symbol of the holiness of God and the judgment of God. That's what fire represents. The cross that Jesus bore, that Jesus was nailed to, listen, that was the physical instrument of his death. And, and guess what? He also took on the wrath of God on, the, on Calvary. God poured out his wrath on Jesus. That's why when you trust him, you won't experience the wrath of God. And the Bible tells us those who trust upon him were saved, but those who do not, but the wrath of God abideth on them. The word of God tells us in John 3, 36. Why? Because we're deserving of that. But Jesus took your wrath on Calvary. God poured it out on Calvary, his judgment for your sin. And listen, that's what the torch represents. The knife represents the physical death. The torch represents that sacrifice. Jesus, through the cross, he allowed them to nail him to a cross. He allowed them to pierce his side. He allowed them to pull out his beard, spit in his face, and beat him. That cat of nine tails before he went to the cross. And all that pain he experienced, Brother Jason, he allowed all of that. Listen, he will. They didn't kill him. He gave up the ghost. Right, amen. Praise God. Amen. But he allowed that to be a picture of the fact the cross was a picture of the physical death he took on for you and me. But listen, hey, that wrath of God, that fire represents the wrath of God he poured out on his son. Listen, Jesus paid it all. We've seen that song, Jesus paid. He paid it all. Amen. Picture with me for a moment, Golgotha. Take your mind there. Just for a moment, listen, let, let's set aside maybe all of the things that may be running. Hopefully things are running through your mind. But listen, sometimes people allow for their mind, even in the midst of preaching, to go astray. But I'm telling you for a moment, just focus in on Golgotha for a moment. You think about that one who allowed for them to be tied to a whipping post. With no shirt on his back and take a, a cat of nine tails, a whip with nine strands on it full of bone and pottery and glass. Those men were trained with that whip to totally brutalize a man. And they whipped our Lord and Savior. He Listen, though every lick he took, we deserved. Right. He willfully took it for He Listen, he didn't deserve one lash. Right. We deserved every single one of them. Right. And he was taking every one for you. They, listen, they did it so extremely that, listen, it says his organs were visible. And here then they throw this, this cross on him and he's, he's going up, he's carrying, and, and he's beaten to a point he was unrecognizable, blood flowing out of our Savior. He's walking up Golgotha, climbing this hill with the cross on his back, bearing, listen, not just the weight of the cross, but he's getting ready to be nailed to that cross and and bear the sins of the world upon his shoulders. And he was spotless. He was sinless. He was a lamb of God. And he climbs, and he takes that lonely walk, climbs that, that mount to lay his life down for you and for me. My goodness. Why would you reject him? Why would you reject him? That's the sacrifice of all sacrifices. Would Calvary final blood that was shed just as Isaac, listen, just as Isaac, they transferred the sticks from the donkey to the son. All of the bondage, all of the sin, all of the wrath that a lost person deserves and lives in was transferred to Jesus. And when you put your faith and trust in him, it can all be gone. Amen. What a savior. 
God provided himself a lamb to supersede all the offerings. We never need an offering again. The final sacrifice. Amen? But here's the fifth thing. Isaac is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ's obedience unto death. Think about that. Look at verse 9 in our text. It says they came to the place which God had told him of. You know, remember, remember when they're heading on and, and uh, Isaac asked Abraham, he says, hey, we've got all the things, but where's the lamb? Where's the sacrifice? Oh, he's getting it right now. He's understanding. And it says this. It says, and they came to the place which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Not one word to hear about a fight. Not one word here. Hey, Dad, let's talk about it. Come on now. Let's think about this thing. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, no, let's just go back. Hold on. Well, maybe not. Hey, I'm going to fight. Listen, he, that word lad, and I'll be honest with you, I don't know. Some say you read. Some say they give an age. I'm not sure if you know the exact age, but he wasn't a child. Right. He was very capable and well aware of knowing what was taking place, and he also was well aware he could have fought if he wanted to. Right. His dad was over 100 years old. He could have fought that off, but it shows us he willfully allowed it to go forward and to take place. I'm telling you, that's faith, amen. Right. And I'm telling you something, that's a picture of Jesus Christ going to the cross, fulfilling the will of the Father in obedience even unto death. Right. Isaac was bound. He, he, was, he was on that altar, bound on the altar, ready to be offered up. Not a word, not a fight, not a struggle. Could have, but he did. He was willing. Not a word recorded from his lips. How about that? Go to Isaiah 53. Keep your place here. Let's go to Isaiah 53 just for a moment. Isaiah 53. Did you see this? Isaiah 53. Look at verse 4. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did have seen him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He has brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his, her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. What a parallel. What a parallel. What a picture we have in Genesis 22 of our Savior. Amen? Amen. Hey. Now we know, listen, we know this. We know in the case of Abraham and Isaac, God stopped him short of sacrificing Isaac. What did he do? He offered him a substitute, didn't he? Right. There is a ram caught in the thicket. That's my sixth point. The ram is a picture of Jesus Christ being the substitute on the cross. Look at verse 12, what it says. It says, and he said, lay not my hand upon the Lord. I mean, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy God, thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. How about that? That ram is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ being our substitute on Calvary. Amen. You see a young man bound, he's about to die, but God calls a halt to it. An offering is provided to die in his stead. How about that? Amen. Jesus Christ took your place. Amen. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of worse as any man should boast. Amen. Right. But he commendeth his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Right. He died for yeah. us. Listen, the ram, here's the thing. He wasn't in a pit. 
He wasn't in a trap. But his horns were in what? <laughs> in briars. Thorns. Around his head. He was caught in a thicket. That that means when Abraham pulled that rascal out of there, there would have been thorns on his head. Mark chapter 15 says this, speaking of our Lord, they clothed him with purple and plated a crown of thorns and put it upon his head. <sighs> what a picture of what Jesus did for us. Amen. Now listen, notice this. That ram, where was he at? He was right behind Abraham all the time. He's right there. He was close. But Abraham didn't notice him till God makes it known. You know what? That reminds me of so many times of sinners. Jesus is so, listen, salvation for you is so close. He's right there. If you'll just turn around, get your eyes off of you and your life, and look to the one who's right there. Amen. Come unto me, all ye labor heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Amen. Amen. Receive Jesus. My sin shall be washed clean. You can, you can have a new life in Christ. Amen. There's so many people today that they're looking around and looking for everything, and Jesus is there saying, Come unto me. All you labor heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Amen. Amen. We need to understand something. The Lord will save you if you'll turn to him. Have the Lord Jesus Christ, your substitute, so close. So close. But you're not going to see him until you're willing to believe what this Bible says. Right. If you'll believe what this Bible says, the Holy Spirit of God, when we look at it in Sunday school, he'll deal with your heart. The Bible says he draws men unto Christ, and you'll see it. Right. But you've got to be willing. You've got to believe. Listen, at some point, Abraham, he had to turn around and see. And then what did he, what did he have to do? He had to go in that direction. Here he is, Brother Jason. He's back here. All of a sudden, God makes it boom. He sees. And what does he do? He goes in that direction. There's the substitute. There's the substitute. Same with the sinner. Quit going the way of the world. Quit looking in your, quit going the direction of you. Turn and go the direction of God. Amen. Well, I just, I don't see it, preacher. I don't understand it. I don't get it yet. You need to turn around and go this way. Amen. That's right. You need to believe the word of God. You need to repent of your sins. Put your faith in Jesus. Trust in him as your savior. Listen, what a savior, amen. What a savior we have. Here's my last point. Abraham made a promise to those other young men that were down at the bottom. He promised they would come again. You know what? We've got the same promise. Right. Now let me show you something. Go to verse 5 in our text. It says, And Abraham said unto, unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Now go down to verse 19. This is, at, listen, after the sacrifice is made, all right, they've departed now, Abraham and Isaac, but verse 19 says this, So Abraham returned unto his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. Now here's what's interesting. Abraham returned to the two servants, but nothing's mentioned of Isaac. Now we know he survived. We know the ram was a substitute. We, we know he survived that. Do you know where you'll find him next mentioned? I'm going to help you if you don't, praise God. You can go over to chapter 24. The next place you find Isaac is when he's receiving the bride. That's right. And that's the exact promise we've got, Papa Little. The next time you're going to see Jesus is when he comes to get you, amen. amen. Praise amen. God, amen. amen. Yeah. He's your substitute. He went to a cross. He paid a sin debt for you. He willfully laid his life down. Listen, hey, he, he died, was buried, rose again. You said, well, listen, I, I haven't seen him. You've trusted in the Lord. The next time you will is when he's coming to get Amen. you. Amen. Amen. That's not by chance. That's just not some neat little thing. Listen, Isaac was offered on the mountain, returns alive, departs with the father. He's not seen again until the bride is united with 
him. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, that's what's next on our calendar. And I'm going to tell you, the events we're seeing unfold in our country, I'm telling you, we are on the brink. We are close to return of the Lord. Amen. You've got it. Listen, you're saved today. You've got every reason to rejoice. That's right. Be thankful today for the Son of God, being the child of God. Look, this account, to me, is, is, is an amazing account. Not only is it a tremendous account to teach us what proper faith is. I'm not talking playing around. I'm talking, I'm talking faith when faith is needed in situations when you're going to have to trust God completely, nothing in yourself, nothing in your reasoning and figuring it out, completely in God and his promises, what he has said, and you'll seek the victory. But also there are seven truths, I believe, found right there in our passage we looked at this morning that paints a picture of our Savior Jesus Christ. Read about a sacrifice in Genesis, only points to a greater sacrifice. Who is that? The Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Look, two two things essential for an offering. It had to be freely given and volunteered. The Lord Jesus Christ, he freely went to Calvary, volunteered himself by the will of the Father. But also, that sacrifice had to be offered, it had to be without blemish. Jesus, hey, Jesus, he never sinned. Right. He went to a cross and bore your sin, my sin, the sins of the world, without sin himself. In right. his life. He was a spotless lamb of God who went to a cross, no sin to bear, but bore the sins of the world upon his shoulders that we might have everlasting life. He paid it all. Listen to me. Before you come to the piano, Brother Jason, why don't you make your way up to a little scene, just a moment of uh, song and uh, closing. If you're lost this morning, today can be the day of salvation for you. So I just don't understand. I just don't, I don't quite understand. Why don't you just look around? He's there. If you'll pay attention. Today is the day of salvation. But for those of us that are born again, we're called by God and that, that saved us from our sin, that we, we're to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice after we become born again. That's what he says. Be a living sacrifice. Why? We have life in Christ. He laid his life down for you. As the Bible says, we're dead in our church, but hey, hey we're alive through Christ. Amen. Therefore, be a living sacrifice. Right. Until he comes back to get you. Now I can tell you something. He's coming. He's coming again. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand over the building. Brother Jason will lead us one hymn. 157. If you want to grab your hymn and let's sing, the altar is open. If you need to come, I want to encourage you to come. Brother Jason, why don't you lead us?
Amen. You'll never exhaust it. But yet the truth that's in it, it's so simple a child can understand. But yet it's so fulfilling. And so we'll never get over it. I'm thankful for his precious word. Amen. 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 The picture, the picture that's painted throughout the scriptures of the greatest sacrifice ever made. That is of the Lord Jesus Christ. He died for you. He died for you. He died for me. He died for all mankind. If you've never trusted him as your Lord and Savior, it's the greatest decision you're going to make in all your life. Amen? Amen? I'm not here to try to pinpoint you down and figure you out. Listen, you know and God knows. I guarantee you that. No one had to tell me. No, When God was dealing with me, no one had to tell me and explain to me what was taking place. I knew in my heart exactly what I needed to do. Amen. And That's even right. in my ignorance and in fighting it, finally, I thank God. Kemper, I thank God for the draw of the Holy Spirit of God. I thank God for the power of God. I finally waved the flag of surrender and gave it to the one who gave his all to me. Amen. And Amen. I gave my life to Jesus. And when Jesus Papa will save me, I've never been the same. Amen. Amen. And the reason I'm not the same has nothing to do with me, but all the one who died for me, he came to live in me. Amen. Amen. And I'm okay with that. Amen. I've been bought with a price, Brother Bart. I'm not my own anymore. And I thank the Lord of that. Amen. Made a wreck Amen. of my life. Ruined it good enough as I could. Made all kinds of issues. I don't care when Jesus moved on the scene, took care of everything. Not only saved my soul, but helped me and my wife and my family. Listen, I can stand before you today and say, you may not have seen, but I'm going to tell you what, if you meet me before I save, you'd know I'm not the same man. What changed? It wasn't some program. It wasn't just turning over a new leaf. What changed me, Brother Jason, what changed my life is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That's he right. saved my Amen. wretched soul, and he'll do the same for you if you'll give your life to him. Amen. 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 Brother Barb, will you close the word of prayer, please? You do that for this one. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We praise you and love you. Thank you that we can be in your house, Lord. Thank you for your precious word delivered to us by our pastor, Lord. And Lord, we pray that, that we could live our lives, that we would let Christ shine through us, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for sending your only begotten Son, Lord, to die for us on, yes. on the old rugged cross, Lord. Lord, we praise you and love you, Lord. As we leave here, we Pray everyone to be blessed, Lord, and, and have a great day. And Lord, we pray that you would give us travel mercies and bring us back at the next appointed time. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Y'all be careful heading home.